My dad, I've said it many times, he was really tough on me when I was a kid. I pushed him. You know, sometimes he cry, but that's okay. If you're on that pitch, you got to work. Martin! 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 Oh, Martin. You start to question, like, does, does my dad really love me? Why, why, is he, why is he so angry all the time? My dad is born in a country called Guyana, next to Suriname. But it's like, uh, it's, the culture is like Jamaica. They speak English, uh, the music, the food, etc. It's like Jamaica, so we have this kind of Caribbean laid-back style accent and everything, so it's fun. From their culture is if you have something special or some kind of talent, um, you need to do everything you can uh, to fulfill your potential. Hi, Martin. I'm proud of being Guyanese. Guyana is a special country. We are special people. We are most loving and warm, warmful people. We have our problems, but proud of being Guyanese. I lived there until I was 14 years old. Then I immigrated to America. I lived in New York. Then I moved to California where I met Martin's mom. And we fell in love, of course. She got pregnant. Then I moved to Denmark. So that's, that's the reason why I end up here. My dad, he, he, he moved to America when he was really young, so he's also American, uh, so I have a bit of both. American, and Caribbean uh, culture in me, and I think like the American culture is ready to dream big, everything is possible. And I have that, I have that inside me. Uh, and the Danish culture is really like, stay humble, work hard. Uh, and I think the mixture of the two, it worked uh, really good for me. Where's Grandpa? I'm from a, a town in Denmark called Esbjerg. It's known for, for the harbour. They call us the fishermen. Yeah, I think the most in Denmark will say it's known for that it smelled of fish in, in, back in the days. Um, it doesn't anymore, I think. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a nice city. It's a really small town and a hard working town. And I had, a, I had a great childhood. I don't have anything to complain about. Uh, me and Martin, we played, I think, together for around two years. Um, I left in 2011, and I think he was around the first team in, from 2009, I guess. Often you see young players coming up, very talented, but at the mental aspect and the way of living, they fail. And um, I think that's where he made the, the difference. What is the most clear for me with Bob Martin is Moments in training, moments in games where you thought, wow, this is a different level. So this is, this is not normal for the Danish league. Uh, if he can put this together and manage to do that over and over again, he's way too good of being, for being here. So that's for me the most clear moments, not one specific moment, but several moments in training in games where you thought, he's, you have the potential to go really, really far. He was something special, you know. I loved his mentality. Uh, he was, uh, I saw him in the schoolyard running around and uh, tell everybody what to do and but he was a good guy you know he took care of everybody he was the leader leader of the gang you know in the school yeah and he got at that moment he got also fantastic physical skills you know he was strong he was fast and, uh, and then he could play football he played in a little club uh, outside Espia so so when you got players like that here in this area they have to be in this club The 
stadium lights. Can you see it? Over the trees. That's how close the stadium is. So sometimes if we can make it to the game when Martin was playing, we can hear when he scores. It comes over the loudspeaker. So we have like a back way. We do. It takes like five minutes on a bicycle. So that was great. That's the house over there. Number seven. My, my old home. lived here there was no grass we killed it football we destroyed it yeah when he played football against me I, I never I never made it easy for him I always made him work for it you know I always push him to that limit so yeah those were the days yeah, I think maybe that the ball up there I think turned green okay it was right there he kicked it up there. Because I remember, I, I don't remember if he, if he were angry at me. And he just kicked the ball and just stopped. So I never went up and get it. I said it's going to stay there for, to be a reminder. So it's amazing. Yeah. And now it is a reminder. It is a reminder. That's the first thing I think about when I come here. Wow, is the ball still there? So, yeah. My dad, I've said it many times, he was really tough on me when I was a kid. Um, and as a kid, it was difficult for me. I didn't really understand why. Um, because when you have your dad tough on you and things, you start to question, like, does, does my dad really love me? Why, why, is he, why is he so angry all the time? Well, I, I give him tough love. You know, I push him to the max. I didn't feel that I played good. My dad, he would, he would, he would yeah, he would do everything. He would yell at me on the pitch, scream at me on the pitch, make me cry when I was young. And, uh, and like, we would get home to the house. He would not talk to me for a week. Um, he would not say anything. He once told me, like, yeah, you have to quit. You have to quit football. The way you're playing, you have to quit. I didn't have my father in the same way that Martin has me. All I needed is a little, uh, what do you call it? Attention, but I didn't get it. And I always said to myself, if I get a kid and, has, and he has, I see he has talent, I'm gonna push him. And that's what I did. So I, and if he play bad, I don't, go, I don't go and say, oh, better luck next time. No, you did bad. You come over to your mom and she give you a hug and say, oh, that's okay, honey, that's good. No, that's not good enough. My mom, uh, she, she's different, she's the soft person. And I think, uh, I think they had a lot of discussion because of me, uh, my parents. Of course, my dad was really, really hard at me, and I remember also, like in the in the meetings before the games, um, uh, my coach used to tell me, like, "Yeah, Martin, please, you're like it was my job not to listen to your dad. Don't listen to your dad when you play." Better, Martin. For set, Martin. Martin. Come again. Come, Martin. Hold Blue Martin! I think it was necessary. I mean, sometimes I did talk to my inner self. I'm a little too hard, you know? But sometimes I lighten the load without he know it. Only myself, you know? And they have times where, you know, when he come home, sometimes I go into him and I just like play a little PlayStation with him to like clear the air. You know, and give him a little hug now and then, and then mm -hmm. and I go. That's because within me, I felt bad. I never really said sorry. sorry. Then I was sure that I'm weak. Even though I'm hurting that I am a little tough on him. I shouldn't show that weak side of me towards him. As a parent, your kid must sur surpass his parents. They must be 10 times better than, than their parents. He's 10 times better than me. I'm happy. 
I did my job, you know. So I'm happy. I did my part. So there's no pressure anymore. Those days are gone, long gone. From the moment he became professional, that's where my pressure is up. Then I did my job. I'm really grateful uh, for what he did uh, to me back in the day. And, and me and my dad, we are, we are really close. So it was tough, but, but it was for a reason. And I'm grateful for it today. If I'm proud, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you can be proud and sometimes you can't even express yourself how proud you are. Cheers! Within, it, your whole body is overwhelmed, you know. Life is just good yeah. and proudness is part of being blessed. You know, everything fits together. I can't say I walk around with a big head, but you know, sometimes it's nice to see someone wearing my son's shirt and you can see your name, you're like, oh wow. Oh wow. You know, it's like, this is special. Whoa, trick shot! <laughs> I remember the first time Martin played at his first uh, professional game for Espia when he came in. It was mind blowing for us. We all were there, enjoying the moment. It was very special for me and his mom and his sisters. We all were so proud. Wherever I go, I always re represent the country I'm from and the city that I'm from. I'm really proud from this, uh, the city that I'm born and where I grew up uh, and the country that I'm from. So I'm always trying to represent uh, my city and my country the best way possible. Hey, are you going to come back to Esbia and play when you're done? Ah, I don't know. Still have a long time to go. Is it? Still have a long time to go. That's good enough. All right, take care. Bye. When I look back at my career, Everything has only been a lesson because I've arrived where I am today because of those lessons. It has brought me to where I am and it helped me for those things that I'm going to see in my, my future. Um, so I'm just really grateful for, for things that I've learned so far.